Of the 44 referenda held in this country, only eight have passed. The last referendum proposal to pass was in 1977. Not only does this show that Australians take referenda very seriously, but also that, as Robert Menzies said, to get an affirmative vote from the Australian people on a referendum proposal is one of the labours of Hercules. It is of the essence of any referendum that the Australian people are presented with a question to which they answer yes or no. This seemingly simple setup belies the complex sets of reasons people might have for choosing one answer over the other. This is why it is crucial to present voters with a clear and comprehensive yes and no case so that all Australians can make an informed decision. Every government since 1928 has agreed with this and provided pamphlets to voters. If it proceeds, the referendum on an Indigenous voice to parliament will be one of the defining political moments of our time. The voice has the potential to change the way our federation is governed. It does not represent a merely procedural amendment to our constitution. This referendum deserves fairly funded yes and no campaigns. And I am deeply concerned about the consequences if that does not occur. This referendum deserves yes and no pamphlets. It deserves the full attention of this parliament and this government. Instead, very regrettably, what this government has given the Australian people reflects a process which is undermined by a profound lack of fairness. The government has declined to fund yes and no campaigns, setting a dangerous precedent for future referenda, uh, but of course, most significantly, undermining the integrity of this referendum process. The Australian people deserve better. It is patronising to assume that Australians do not need to receive official material associated with referenda. The Australian Electoral Commission reports that 40 per cent of recipients use its mailed material, a pamphlet setting out the yes and no case, as a main source of information in casting their vote. That said, Acting Madam Deputy President, we are encouraged by indications from the government that it will reverse its decision and agree to a yes and no pamphlet. This is not just a matter of fairness, but critical to our democratic process. It is, I will and put on the record very strongly, it is deeply concerning, however, that the government thought it could get away with a smoke and mirrors approach to this referendum. And I hope and trust that on this point, common sense will prevail and there will be a yes and no pamphlet received by all Australians. We know that electoral events, and this is a very important point to make in relation to ensuring that all Australians receive appropriate information. We know that electoral events are opportunities for bad actors to use misinformation to influence voters. The ACCC reports that 92 per cent of the respondents to the ACCC news survey had some concern about the quality of news and journalism they were consuming. And that analysis has identified concerning consumer and competition harms across a range of digital platform services that are widespread, entrenched and systemic. Only weeks ago, the Director General of ASIO told Australians that we are currently experiencing the greatest level of foreign interference in Australia's history. Let me just say that again. The greatest level of foreign interference in Australia's history. It would be naive in the extreme to think that foreign actors who desire to disrupt and undermine our democracy will not seek to spread misinformation in relation to the referendum on The Voice. 
Uh, we have seen foreign influence at work in Canada and in Europe very openly, and we know that we are not immune. So in the name of fairness, integrity and democracy, the Albanese government must fund official yes and no campaigns. This will give Australians the confidence that the referendum is being conducted transparently, fairly and with integrity. Having official yes and no campaigns would minimise the risk that the referendum process will be undermined by any sort of misinformation campaign, no matter the source of that misinformation campaign. The government has said it will fund a fax campaign to the tune of $9.4 million. I am concerned that this may be an underhanded attempt to ensure that its own view on The Voice prevails. The Prime Minister recently told, reportedly, the Labor caucus that the government needs to minimise scare campaigns in relation to The Voice. Instead of doing the right thing and funding both sides equally, the government has decided to fund arguably the yes case by proxy through its fax campaign. And that's why it's so critically important that any factual campaign must be delivered in a way that is completely neutral. How can we trust the government to ensure a fair referendum process when, and I say this respectfully, uh, the government has already broken so many of its promises to the Australian people. Promises on power prices, on interest rates, on mortgages, on superannuation and even on registered nurses in aged care homes. So Australians deserve to have the absolute crystal clear clarity in relation to the machinery as to how this referendum will be conducted. All Australians have a right to have their say, and that's why getting this machinery bill is so important. Unlike the government, we do not want to stand in the way of Australians having their say fairly and with integrity. We want Australians to be free to exercise their free will, their free choice free of foreign interference, free of foreign influence, free of government pressure, free of misinformation. This freedom is fundamental to the maintenance of our democracy and the integrity of our constitution. Democracies are not merely measured by what their citizens vote for, but how they vote. The framers of our constitution understood this which is why they inserted section 128, the referendum provision. Referenda represent the soul of representative democracy in this country. They are a means by which Australians are meant to express their true view on matters of fundamental importance. It was with a referendum that Indigenous people were counted as Australians in 1967. Once again, Australians have been called to vote on a matter of fundamental importance, the establishment of an Indigenous voice. Why does the government continue to insist that Australians can't make an informed decision about this by denying them an official yes and no campaign? There is no doubt that the legit legitimacy of the referendum result will depend heavily on the manner in which the referendum process is conducted by the government. The government needs to ensure that, especially on a matter as important as the voice, the referendum is conducted with complete impartiality and unquestionable integrity. Why does it hesitate to do this? Surely, surely this is counterproductive. Shortly, surely there is the risk that the government may in fact harm its own case for a yes result in the referendum. Regrettably, the government has tried to wriggle out of its responsibility to ensure a fair referendum process ever since 
it announced its intention to hold one. And I think this says a lot about the trust and the way the government trusts the Australian people to make their own choices. Um, this is too important for the government to attempt to make the choices for Australians. I also want to flag my deep concerns about other matters concerning the referendum. The refusal of the Prime Minister to answer 15 very reasonable questions put to the Prime Minister by the Leader of the Opposition, Mr Dutton. And it is also deeply concerning that within a number of months before Australians are meant to go to this referendum, uh, we still don't know the wording, the proposed wording that would be put to the Australian people. There is also a very live debate which continues about the scope of the powers of the voice, along with many other questions. And I have to say, I think in many respects, the government has made a real mess of this and undermined this process because it has not been able to it has not been able to address so many fundamental questions. And the bottom line is Australians do have a right to know those questions. And Australians should not be required to answer yes or no until those questions are answered. So I stand here today to defend the right of all Australians to be presented with a real choice at this referendum, a genuine choice informed by fair and balanced information from yes and no campaigns receiving fair and equal funding. Um, like my colleagues and most recently um, Senator Payne in her contribution, I too want to adopt a constructive approach to this bill. But the government must establish a level playing field. <clears throat> Getting this bill right is so important. If this bill is not right, this is going to do this whole process fundamental damage. It has never been more important to ensure that our referendum machinery provisions are fit for purpose. And again, and I say Senator Farrell is in the chamber, and I say to Senator Farrell, we really need to get this right. So I call on the government to do the right thing by the Australian people and let them have their say in a manner which is fair and in a manner which is, does, not, does not undermine the integrity of this very important process and the decision that all Australians must make. Thank you. Senator